But I said, you know what, we're here. So we got back out of the car again and came on around. And we were greeted by, uh, as I recall, Debbie Abelin and one other person. Made us feel quite at home. And uh, we want, went in and um, we were captivated. The, the teaching was something we'd never heard before. And my first experience in hearing Pastor Jack teach, I, I just looked at him and I thought, how can someone this young have this much depth and grasp of the scripture? And that was it for me. We just kind of became permanent at that point on. And that was, I say, back in 1985, August of 1985. And of course, we've been here ever since. Other fond memories, I guess, um, I got to be involved with the search and locating of this facility. And I, I remember sitting at the Abelans' kitchen table with the other board members trying to decide who's going to be willing to sign on a, for a loan of more than any of us had ever seen in money before. It was, it was big to us at the time. If I can, I'll tell you one little other story. One of the other places we looked at was up by the Whitwood Mall before we bought this. It was right in there where uh, Whitwood Mall, on the west side of it, before they had remodeled this mall, there was a parking structure back in there. And right next to that, there was an old tire place. Well, we looked at this old tire place because it was a big commercial building and uh, they had gone out of business and we thought, you know, well, if we could get in there and remodel that business, that building, and have the p parking structure, we have ample parking, because parking is always a big problem uh, for churches. Uh, you know, you need it a bunch for a few hours and then you don't need it. And, and so that parking structure was gonna be just, you know, a dream come true from the standpoint of operations. About three weeks later, we had an earthquake, and the structure fell. It collapsed on a Sunday. And you couldn't help but think about how bad that could have been for hundreds of people having been parked in that structure after, right after we would have opened a service. It, it just, you know, from a faithfulness standpoint, <laughs> God protected us. So I do remember the first service here, and what a what a wonderful and just you know one of those emotional days that you you look at and you don't ever forget. Um, it's great. My fondest memories of Morningstar actually were the beginning when we moved from the school over to this, the sanctuary here uh, on Leffingwell. We first came into this property, I believe it was late 1988, mid-1988, and the place was so bad you couldn't drive a car through the whole parking lot because there were so many trees and dilapidated buildings and junk just lying down around everywhere. It seemed like a disaster moving into this place because it seemed like it was a jungle, a building within a jungle. When we first began in this building and the, and the weekends and the many weekends that we spent chopping down trees and just cleaning the place and painting the place, I think Ernie Ortiz and myself were up in trees for, it seemed like months. Growing up here, um, I have very warm memories of, um, my, my father was deeply involved in the church here, so um, when they were cutting the trees down and back, I was uh, out here, you know, I'm sure playing around, acting like I was helping, uh, probably wasn't helping much at all, getting in the way, um, but I remember that kind of stuff um, when they were doing the cleanup on the building here. When we first moved in, you couldn't even drive around. We took 18 40-yard dumpsters of trash off, of, off the property before we even started working on it. So it was, a, it was quite a project, quite a fixer-upper. The Lord provides for us uh, in so many ways. For the church, certainly God um, began to provide by raising up some men and women who began to serve God and, and, and capture the vision of the church early on. And, that has always been the case, you know, the, unless the Lord builds the house, the Bible says we're laboring in vain. Over the years, the 
property that we're now on has kind of gone through some facelifts. We first came into this property, I believe it was late 1988. We added a second story onto our back classroom wing because uh, our church is like bunnies. All these young parents were having kids like crazy, so we needed more room. Um, after that, our sanctuary needed some expanding, so through God's grace, we were given permission from the city and from the fire marshal to uh, put a big, huge white tent out on the center yard, um, which was an interesting experience because the tent was up in the middle of summer. They had this huge tent that set up on the lawn out there amongst the buildings. It pretty much took up the whole gra grass area. You could feel the heat radiating off that, that canvas tent, and it was pretty uncomfortable. At the same time, it was kind of fun because it was something different. You know, you were out meeting in, in, in the outdoors kind of a thing. You know, it, w it was a big undertaking because we had to put up the tent and we had to put up all the chairs and the sound equipment. And we were in the tent over there. It was just like a big time of growth and it was wonderful. And it's been ins inspirational all along, especially the people and to see the love of the people of Morningstar. It just reminded us, like we had at the very beginning, that it wasn't about a building. It was about God's word going out. And we came into this new building with one, one service um, because we had so many extra seats and with just a matter of months we had to go to two because of the growth of the church during that time. I think, you know, early on the fondest memory was, was sitting with four or five folks on a, on a floor in, in a house in Whittier saying, so what are we going to call this church and, and, and what will God do with us and what should we do first? And, and uh, I, I remember very well the the first, you know, setup of the chairs and the first meeting with the school trying to find a place to meet. And uh, the, the firsts are always fun, I think. Probably the fondest has to do with our kids, you know, the, the being dedicated. Matter of fact, our daughter was the first one dedicated uh, at the old Leffingwell School. Um, and then Jared uh, was really special because he was born two months premature. So uh, when Jack Hill came up, he was still about the size of a Cabbage Patch doll. And, uh, you know, got oohs and ahs from the people in the crowd when they found out he was born at 2 pounds, 14 ounces. Um, so those are probably the two. And then seeing them baptized by Jack in, in the uh, Pacific Ocean at Corona Del Mar, uh, Pirate's Cove, that was pretty good. Oh, the trips I remember. I've gone on so many trips with the church and so many trips privately with Jack and Debbie, uh, they're hard to say, but I would say the Israel trips that we've been on with the church and stuff, they were so wonderful and about bringing the, the Word of God seems to bring it to life when you see the places that you're taught about. It would have to be the trip to Dumaguete in 1986, during which time the communist guerrillas were kidnapping pastors. <laughs> Great time to go. But we went because we felt led and it was amazing. There were so many people that came out to see Jack's teaching and to hear him. There were people that would climb, they would climb trees like Zacchaeus did with Jesus to hear him, and many, many people got saved. I'm not sure of the numbers, but there were hundreds, at least hundreds, and uh, it, was, it was just really amazing to see God's Spirit move. Probably the, the the most fond memories are, are the ones that Jack would probably not want to share with everybody else about on the softball field where uh, Jack is as zealous as he is uh, a servant of God he's also rather zealous when it comes to playing softball and uh, you know it's it's fun to see that sometimes the pastor comes down off the pulpit and he's just one of us and uh, uh, you know we love him for it and as a matter of fact this last season we, uh, we showed up a couple of days short and so uh, Jack came out and actually played for the first time in, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. And uh, it was like the, the good old days. Oh, if you'd like more information about Morningstar Christian Chapel and how you can get involved in these various ministries, visit our website at www.morningstarcc.org. Or if you'd like to visit us sometime, you can get information and directions to the church either from our website or by calling our church office at 562 9430297 So as you daily walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, may you continue to grow in his grace. All right, let's open our Bibles tonight to the book of Haggai, shall we? I thought we'd share good news with you.